एक के लिए ये अब होगी रिकॉर्डिंग सो वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द रिमेनिंग पार्ट ऑफ द यूनिट नंबर वन ऑफ द माइक्रो प्रोसेसर इन विच वी हैव टू डिस्कस टुडे अबाउट द ब्रांचिंग इंस्ट्रक्शंस we have many branching instructions which are used in 8085 uh, there are two kinds of branching instruction one is uh, conditional branching instruction and another is unconditional branching instruction so branching instruction is normally used in 8085 to change the sequence of the execution of a program we know that uh, normally the program is being executed in a sequence from top to bottom in a in, in a certain phase first line will be executed first and then second then fourth but as per the requirement there may be possibility that you will be able to change the sequence of the execution of the program and for that we are in requirement of branching instructions so the first instruction which are used in 8085 for for changing the sequence of the execution of the program is known as jump instruction whose mnemonic code is jmp along with the 16 bit address of course this instruction is a 3 byte instruction and it jumps to that particular memory address whose address is defined in the 16 bit and as a 16 bit address in the jump instruction so whenever jump 16 bit address instruction is being executed immediately the sequence of the program will be changed and instead of executing the next instruction it will execute the instruction which is mentioned or represented by this 16 bit address so this is unconditional branching instruction because whenever this instruction is written the microprocessor has to jump to the 16 bit address which is defined within the instruction the second instruction which is used <coughs> is a conditional branching instruction that is jump on zero 16 bit address this instruction will work or it will jump on checking certain condition after the condition is being satisfied then only it will jump to the 16 bit address which is defined within the instruction so zero means zero flag so it will jump to that 16 bit address defined within the instruction whenever zero flag will be set if zero flag is not set it will not jump to the 16 bit address so jump on zero uh is a conditional branching instruction in which if the condition is being satisfied means if the zero flag is set then only it will jump to the 16 bit address otherwise it will execute the next instruction the third instruction is j and z j and z is a jump on no zero if zero flag is not set then only it will jump to the 16 bit address otherwise it will execute the next instruction this also this instruction is also a conditional branching instruction the fourth instruction is jump on carry if the carry flag is set then only it will jump to the address which is defined within the instruction and if carry flag is not set it will execute the next instruction the next is jump on no carry if carry flag is not set then only it will jump to the 16 bit address otherwise it will execute the next so in this way you have found you you got that jm jmp instruction is an unconditional means it has not to test any condition but jump on zero jump on no zero jump on carry and jump on no carry are the conditional branching instruction which works only when the condition is being satisfied works means it will jump to the address defined within the instruction if and only if the condition is being satisfied <clears throat> the next instruction is the branching instruction is the call instruction call instruction is used whenever we have we we are using subroutines or sub programs subroutine or the sub program is a kind of a program uh, whenever <clears throat> in a main program whenever certain set of instructions certain lines are being repeated so instead of repeating it many times instead of that what we used to do we that bunch of line we call that we write separately somewhere else in the memory and we call that program as a sub program and the rest of the program is known as main program 
so instead of writing many times once we have we write that set of instructions only once at a certain place in the memory and whenever it is required by the main program to call it it will call that set of instructions which are written somewhere else uh, it will call the sub program and for calling that sub program call instructions are being used so call instruction the format of call instruction is call 16 bit address what will happen it will jump to the 16 bit address it will call the sub program which is written at the 16 bit address which is defined within the instruction so once it will jump it will change the sequence of the program it will not execute the next instruction it will execute the instruction which is written at 16 bit address in the form of a sub program and once that sub program is being executed in a sequence the last statement the last instruction of that sub program will be the return so call is a uh, instruction which is used in the main program to call the sub program to execute the sub program and return is to return from the sub program back to the main program so where it will return it will just return to the next place from where it has left as a call instruction so all these instructions are the uh, branching instruction these are the general branching instruction besides that we have some more branching instruction that we will discuss later on then we have a machine control instruction and in this we have two instructions hld that is halt and nop that is no operation so the meaning of halt is to stop the processing to completely end the execution of the program and the program and after that whatever you have written it will not be executed so halt is a kind of a instruction which is normally used whenever you want to finish the program and no operation is another kind of halt instruction but it does not perform any operation but it can resume after that so the difference between halt and the no operation is halt means permanently stop the execution but no operation means temporarily stop the execution and after that there is a possibility that next instruction will be executed after some time so no operation is normally used to just to in increase the time delay within the program and uh, halt is used to permanently stop or end the program then we have a opcode format because every mnemonic is having certain code we know that as a, either as a binary code or as a hex code and these codes are being made by uh, using a certain format we know that instruction is having two uh, parts one is known as operation code in the short form it is known as op code and another is called operand op code is a that part of the instruction which informs the processor that what it has to do what operation it has to do and operate operand is a kind of a uh, data on which it has to do so how the different instruction will have its own and a specific uh, hex code that can be obtained with the help of the opcode format so as far well as the register b c d e every a register which is designated with with a certain code b is 000 c is 001 d is 010 e is 011 h is 100 l is 101 and so on similarly we also use uh, in the instruction we also use the register pair the bc pair is a so these are the certain formats in which the individual registers are being put for example uh, add b is an instruction uh, it's, it's a mnemonic of using of adding two numbers add b what it used to do it will add the content of b register with the content of accumulator and the result will be stored in the accumulator so what will be the hex code of add b it will be given by by the opcode format so we know the add for the add binary code is 100 now it, it has been given by the uh, design engineer of uh, 8085 and the code of b as we have seen just previously that it is 000 so add code is 1000 and b is 000 and to, it is going to add the content of b with the a which is implicitly defined 
so the binary instruction of add b will be 1000 that is 80 so the hex code of add b will be 80 similarly we have add c if we have add c so add will have same code but the c will be having 001 so it will become 81 similarly we have move ca so move have the code 01 c has the code 001 a has the code 111 so the instruction move ca will have the binary code for f then we have data formats normally uh, the uh, microprocessor used to work only on the binary codes as we know it, it, it does not recognize any other number it recognizes only the eight uh, binary digits but as per the requirement the user can uh, do uh, can use uh, the many codes uh, in the form of a data format now what are the different data formats which are used in 8085 now <coughs> the first one is the ascii code uh, ascii code is a 7 bit alphanumeric code that uh, represents the decimal number english alphabets uh, and non printable characters uh, so uh, it depends that what code the user is using so ascii code it can use which is a 7, 7, 7 bit alphanumeric code now beside that alpha, uh, ascii is also an 8 bit code in which the uh, the additional number which is the 8, 8 bit uh, represents the graphic characters now the second data format is the bcd code the term bcd stand for binary coded decimal number and it is used uh, for the decimal numbers and the decimal number we know that it starts from 0 to 9 so there are only 10 digits from 0 to 9 in the decimal number therefore we need only four uh, binary digits to represent to represent the 10 digit, 10 digit from 0000, 000 to 1001 but besides that uh, after 1001 the rest remains unused because the bcd can be represented only by the 10 so 1010 zero, one, zero, uh, 1101 one, one, like that these numbers remains invalid in case of bcd numbers so since uh, the registers which are used in 8085 is an 8 bit register and individual bcd code can be represented by four uh, binary digits so it means one register can represent two bcd numbers because it has the capacity of storing eight binary digits then we have uh, another data format that is the sign number a sign number a signed integer is uh, either a positive number or a negative number so in 808 bit processor that is 8085 uh, the most significant bit that is d7 bit is always representing the sign if it is zero it represents the negative number it represents the positive number and if it is one it represents the negative number and the remaining digits that is from d0 to d6 uh, represents the magnitude of the integer so it means if the d7 bit is meant for the uh, designating the sign of the number whether it is positive or negative so it means the magnitude can be in between d0 to d6 it means so the maximum positive number which we can obtain uh, with this is uh, uh, 0 1 1 1 and 1 1 1 that is uh, 7f 7f is the maximum positive uh, of course we can use 0 0 0 0 0 0 is the minimum and 7f is the maximum and the remaining hexadecimal number starting from 80 to ff that will be considered as a negative number so uh, now as far as the negative numbers are concerned it is already uh, we know that in 8085 it is already represented in the form of a uh, twos, twos complement form then we have a unsigned uh, numbers unsigned number is a kind of integer uh, without a sign so if there is without a sign so it means all the eight uh, binary digits can be used to represent so the minimum value of the unsigned number is 00, zero and the maximum value will be FFH. That's a decimal. Now, <coughs> let us uh, 
what is the significance of these data formats let us uh, let us know that what what kind of thing it is going to represent suppose uh, that after doing any uh, performing any operation the result in the accumulator becomes 41 and this number can have many interpretation because the microprocessor does not know anything it it it, it knows only the binary digits so it is the user who is going to rip, uh, to identify whether the number is an unsigned number or it is a bcd or it is ascii or whatever it is so it is the representation which it is the assessment of the user by which it will be uh, representing this 41 so if 41 is the result in the form of a hexadecimal number in accumulator uh, if it is represented in the form of a binary it will be 01000001 so it can be an unsigned number equivalent to decimal 65 because 41 hexadecimal will be equal to 65 decimal number if it is a bcd number it will be 41 decimal if it is ascii so we know that uh, 41 is the uh, code for the ascii uh, for the uh, capital A or it can be represented uh, that it is a group of 8 bit which in which it is representing D6 bit and the D0 bit to be on or remain 1 and rest of the bits are 0. So what I mean to say that processor processes only the binary digit it is the uh, it is up to the user how it is going to interpret the result whether it is going to interpret it in the form of a signed number unsigned number bct number or ascii number it is uh, not the duty and the responsibility of the processor to to identify whether the number is a negative number or a positive number or a bct number it it, it, it knows only the binary number it is the duty and the responsibility of the user to interpret the result in whatever form it wants now let us discuss about how to uh, write assemble and execute a particular program so first of all we must know that uh, we must know the problem statement we have to analyze those problem statement uh, the next part is the to, to represent in the form of a graphical representation and then to write the code using particular language and then uh, we have to write that program using the code into the computer. So the first of first important thing is the problem statement. Then it's analysis. Analysis means that uh, you have to develop a step by step procedure, and that developing of the step by step procedure is normally known as the algorithm. And representing that algorithm in the form of a flowchart is known as in the form of a block diagram or in, in the form of tutorial representation is known as flowchart. It is called flowchart because it, it charts the flow, it's a pictorial representation and it charts the flow of the program. That is why it is called flowchart. And then once we draw the flowchart, then we start translating the flowchart into the mnemonics code using the assembly language program. And once we write the mnemonics code, then manual by doing manual assembly, we try to look up the table and write the hex code corresponding to the individual mnemonics which has been written for the instructions but while writing the hex code it has to be very very visible because individual instructions may be of one byte two byte or three byte so it depends what kind of instructions are being used and depending upon that we try to write the hex code this is an example of writing the hex code suppose we have we want to add two numbers First we load first number into the accumulator, second number in the B register and then we add the content of B with the content of accumulator. So the first instruction is a two byte instruction, second instruction is again two byte instruction, third instruction is a single byte and fourth instruction is a one byte. So the total memory it will be used uh, to store the first instruction will be two memory locations, second two memory location, third one. So it depends that how many bytes are available in the instruction. If it is two byte instruction, it will take two memory location. And this way the program is being written. This is how the program is being written that uh, we have a, first of all, we write memory, memory address, and then we write the hex code, mnemonics code, and then comments. So first we write mnemonics code and the comments. Comments is nothing but what the instruction is going to do. And once we are able to do it, we define the memory location where we want to be feed, feed it. And then depending upon the code of the mnemonics, we write the hex code. 
MVIA has the hex code 3, so we will write 3. Then we have 32 because this instruction is a 2 byte instruction. MVIB has the code 06, so 06. 36 is the code uh, data, so 36. Add B has the code 80 and Halt has the code 76. So in this way, we on the individual memory location, we write that code and then we try to execute the program. Now for recognizing the number of the bytes in any instruction, it is necessary to recognize because until unless you are not recognizing, you will not be going to allot the number of memory locations for, for writing the instructions. And to identify the number of bytes in a given instruction is very simple. If any instruction is followed by an 8-bit number within the instruction, that instruction will be 2 byte. If any instruction is followed by 16-bit number, that instruction will be a 3 byte. But if any instruction is followed by nothing, only operand with no 8-bit, no 16-bit, that uh, instruction will be single byte instruction. Now the question comes that how the microprocessor differentiate between data and instruction because whenever we are feeding the program, we are feeding the hex code. So suppose 3 may be the hex code and 3 may be the data. So how the microprocessor is going to recognize? The answer is very simple. The first and the foremost instruction which is being fetched by the microprocessor is always an instruction. And once this instruction is being fetched and is being decoded by the decoder, instruction decoder, the microprocessor will be able to know that this instruction is a single byte instruction or a two byte or three byte. If it is a single byte instruction, then the next instruction which will be fetched will be an instruction. But if it is a two byte instruction, then the second instruction, the second byte which will be fed, fed which will be fetched, but that will be a memory read operation or the data. Or if it is a three byte instruction, then it means the next two bytes which will be fetched will be data, it will not be instruction. So the microprocessor differentiate between data and instruction by fetching the first and the foremost and depending upon that it will be able to know that it is an instruction or it is a data. If it is first instruction it will be a, it, if, if it is the first fetch it will be instruction. If it is a second fetch then it may be a instruction or it may be a data. It depends that what happens with the previous instruction fetch. That's all.